Hey, what's up, HSM? Ish here. Welcome y'all to this week's midweek service. So my life has gotten back to somewhat normal. I'm going back to work and doing those things, but the part of the normalcy that I want to have back is to get to hang out with y'all on Wednesday nights in our church building. And so, guys, I miss y'all, but, you know, things are in God's control. And so for now, we're going to have to do what we got to do, right? So tonight, let's get ready. Check out this um, today's worship service, today's lesson, today's message. And guys, just prepare yourself right now. Get fired up. I know y'all probably been sleeping all week and just been laying around doing nothing, you know, besides schoolwork. But get up, get ready, you know, set your minds right, you know, and just prepare ourselves to worship God and to hear what God has for us today. So guys, until we can meet again, keep yourself safe. And guys, I do miss y'all. We all miss y'all and can't wait to get to see you again. Have a good day. Laters. Even though I'm wrong, Quarantine has put a spotlight on a lot of areas in our life, uh, specifically our families. I know that we're a month into this quarantine and a lot of our families are trying to navigate and trying to figure out how are we supposed to do this thing? Which is funny because we have seen or watched a lot of families in action and we have seen a lot of examples. I mean, think about some of the shows that you watch uh, think about all the families that are uh, a part of that, whether it's On the Block, Blackish, Modern Family, This Is Us, um, Fresh Off the Boat, or even Fuller House. Or even think about the celebrity families. You got the, the Kardashians, you got Beyonce and Jay-Z, you got Chip and Joanne uh, Gaines, you got the Duck Dynasty, Steph and Ali Aisha Curry. You have all those families and you have seen examples of families, yet we're still trying to figure out 
how is our family supposed to look like? Or even to the point of what does a normal family look like? We, we see the examples, yet they don't see very normal to us, right? And I mean, truth be told, normal families don't provide a lot of entertainment. So that's probably one of the reasons why our families don't look like theirs is because they're not a normal family. And so people are watching it for entertainment, for drama. And so the, our families seem a little bit different. But maybe as you're looking at your family, there's a lot of different varieties out there and you're trying to see what, which one is mine, all right? Maybe you, you don't have, uh, you have a not so normal family. Uh, and, and these are uh, probably times when you wish your family looked more like other families. You're, you're, you're window shopping, you're going, I wish they looked, my family looked like theirs. Or, or maybe your family's pretty normal but a little quirky and, and you love it because you're part of the quirkiness of it. Or, or maybe your family is too normal and sometimes you wish it was a little bit different or more interesting. Or, or maybe your family looks normal on the outside, but you being behind closed doors, you know what they really are like. And you know that there's a lot of things going on that maybe you don't like to talk about too much. And so no matter what kind of family you have, I hope that you know that you and your family matter and are loved by God and by us. And no matter what you think about your family, no one truly has a normal family. And guess what? That's okay. You know, no one has this perfect family. No one, we, our, our families might look normal from the outside, but we all know that it's not. Or, or maybe you've even heard yourself say some of these, these quotes, you know, my family is so dysfunctional, or my family just doesn't understand me, or I wish I had a different family. I, I, I know I have. You know, I look back and, you know, all through my middle school and high school years, I, I looked at my life and I went, man, I... I don't have a normal family. Shoot, you know, my dad left when I was two and a half. My, I have a brother, a half brother and a half sister that I didn't meet till I was about nine years old. Uh, my mom uh, dated my stepdad for 10 years before they even got married. Um, I mean, I looked at my family and I'm like, none of this is normal. Yet I felt like I was alone because I looked at everybody else and I figured, man, there's something that I'm missing. There's something wrong with my family. And the beauty is, uh, as, as we talk about scripture, as we talk and look at the Bible, which we often do here, is, man, how do our families look like the ones in the Bible? And how can God use those families? And we forget that God can still use our families as, as well. Because the crazy thing is, God can use your family to do great things. And how do I know this? Because scripture tells us. You know, maybe that sounds very unlikely. You're looking around, you're going, you haven't met my, my whole family, or you don't know all the dirty little secrets, but God can use any and every family for his glory. And God can use your family too. You know, as you look at the first family, Adam and Eve, in Genesis um, chapter two and chapter three, you know, God creates this whole world, this whole universe creates animals and then creates Adam and then sees that it's not good for him to be alone. And so he creates Eve to come along and help him. And, and, and they're living their life and, and it's the, the, the picture perfect family. I mean, think about this. They're spending time together without kids, right? But they have a closeness with God. Every day their needs are met. Everything is perfect. They're walking alongside God. Their relationship with God is thriving, but because of them, they disobeyed God and sin entered this world. And when that happened, they lost their innocence. They lost the Garden of Eden. They, they, they lost their closeness with God. All of a sudden, that was taken away. But what they gained was the shame, a difficult life, the cycle of sin, that would impact them and not only impact them, but also impact their future. This, this family started out with so much hope and promise, but their poor decisions led to pain, loss, damaged relationships, and brokenness. But when this happened, 
what was God's response? I mean, think about this. God, God was disappointed. If you go and look, you, you, you see the, the, the disappointment, but there was consequences as well. But through all that, God still took care of them. Because despite their mistakes, God did not leave this family hopeless. You continue on in Genesis 4. And Adam and Eve have, have left the garden and they're moving forward and their relationship with God has, has grown further apart because of sin. And um, it, it kind of feels like maybe uh, God left them, but the truth is God had never left them. They were still hanging out. They were still talking to him. They still had a relationship with him. But again, the, the sin and the pain that they caused extended to their family. And their two kids, Cain and Abel, there was a rift between them. And it all happened because one obeyed God and God's commandments and the other one did not. And the one that didn't felt jealousy, felt hatred towards his brother because how dare God look upon him with more pleasure than myself. And again, because sin had provided this brokenness and had broken our world, his choices and his actions led to him killing his own brother. And again, you see God's response. You see God's response of disappointment, consequences. But even through that, despite his mistakes, God didn't leave Cain hopeless. He, he was there along the way and he provided something that he knew he would use them for something greater. And so when you look at, at, at the first family, you know, the, the, the first family of, of mankind, you wonder, you know, what good can possibly come from their story? I mean, Adam and Eve messed it up. They messed it up for everybody. What good could come out of this story? Or can this family ever escape the cycle of sin and violence? Can God redeem them? You ask those questions about them. And those are the same questions that we can ask about our families. Can, can God ever change something negative, a mistake, a pain? Can God ever use that or redeem that? Can, it, can our family ever break the cycle of sin and violence? And the story of this family is the same story about our family through tragedy. Their story is greater than their worst moments. Their story God was able to use to tell a greater story. Look at what happens in Romans chapter 5. As, as we continue and um, the story of the, the Bible continues, we see something that God says and does through this family. One of the things is that we look at genealogies in Scripture in the New Testament. There's a lot of them. And maybe to us it means nothing. They're like, okay, just names, cool. They're just getting recognition. But the big thing about this is it shows you the lineage, but it also shows you where Jesus came from. The things that God used in the past to bring about redemption and hope to this world. So Romans chapter 5 verse 18 to the end of it, 21, it says, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in the condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as though the disobedience of the one man, the many, were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man, um, one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So many families make mistakes. And in this case, that mistake went on to spread throughout the world and sin entered. But I, I want you to catch what, what it says there, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Meaning that yes, their sin, their mistake was great, but God's grace is so much greater. God's grace covers a multitude of sin. God's plan is bigger than the mistakes of this family. 
And guys, I, I want you to look at this and make it personal. This is not just the, the truth about Adam and Eve, but this is the truth about you and I and our families. That God never gave up on Adam and Eve's family, and he's not going to give up on your family either. Despite our mistakes, God doesn't leave us or our families hopeless. That Adam and Eve introduced sin into this world, but God used their family to conquer sin forever through Jesus. What an amazing reminder that every family, including the imperfect, the not so typical families, can be used by God. So now what? what, what is, how is this going to impact my life? You know, you're, you're sitting there and I, I want you to kind of take inventory or, or kind of look at your family and just figure out how is our family different? And, and I don't mean like, let's start critiquing mom and dad and your brother and sister and let's start pointing out all the wrongs. But what I mean is let's take a look at our family. Where are our falls? Where do we fall short on things? Because those are the areas that God can use to redeem the world. That those are the areas that God can use to bring light, to bring hope through our family. You know, sometimes we feel like uh, our, our, our imperfect family is, is just full of things. Whether it's the structure, the dynamics, the situation, the past, perhaps even our family's faith. You know, that's, that's just so imperfect, not right. Or, or how has God been good to you and your family? How does your family need God's help? How can God be able to use your family for good? How do you think God might, might want to use you for good in your family's story? Maybe you're the only Christian. Maybe you're the only one that's following Jesus. How can God use that to impact your life? And so as we dive in into this first week and over these next few weeks, we're going to be looking at families and how God can use that and how our life and our families don't have to be normal because the truth is no family is normal. We're all a typical family. We're all not so normal families and that's okay because God can still use that. And so this is where I want to start with the honest truth of knowing that even though our families are not normal, they're, they're not so typical families. We have all the quirkiness, all the mistakes, all the hurt, all the past, all the sin that God can still use our families. And so that's my prayer for you, that you would figure out and begin to ask God, God, how do I play a role in my family? How does my family how can we be used for your glory? And what are you trying to accomplish through that? Let's pray. God, thank you for your redeem, redeeming love. Father, for always being there and never giving up on us. And God, I know this. We know this because you never gave up on the families in Scripture. And so God, help us to be reminded of that. Help us to take this truth and know that our families even with the imperfectness, with the, the quirkiness, with um, the, the lack of, of people perhaps in our life that God, that our family, even though it is not a normal family, that God, that you can still use it, that you can still redeem it, and you can bring light and hope to this world through it. Be with us as we look at our families over these next few weeks. And Father, don't give us a, a spirit of, of judging or condemnation, but Father, a spirit of humility, of knowing that, yes, our families are messed up, but we're a part of this family too. So let's work together. Look to you for help as we navigate through our family and through our relationships in there. Amen. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Our prayer is that God continues to speak to you through this video. I want to remind you as we head into small groups that during this series, we are not expecting you to come in with your darkest, deepest family secret. Uh, on the contrary, we want you to just think through this, like what is it that God is trying to do and redeem through our family? And so as you look at your family, don't look and focus on the negative but look on the positive of what God is trying to accomplish 
in you, through you, and through your family. So we wanna invite you to small groups tonight at seven o'clock. It's through Zoom, so we invite you to click on the link provided on this video, or you can go to our um, Instagram bio and that link will lead you to our small groups. Again, thanks so much and we can't wait to see you tonight.